Right, we want to back this out, but whoever's decommissioned this has left the refrigerant in it. They haven't shut the head valve, so now the compressor's full of gas. I can't take that cap off because it'll let all the gas out. If I wind that valve over, shut that cap off, it'll let all the gas into the pipe work. It's already full of air when it was installed, so we're going to give it a quick buzz. It should go off on a low pressure switch to suck any vapour out of here. So uh, let's see if it works. I've not seen this run yet. Service is no. Not right, is he cutting at naught? And that diff. Set it wrong. You set it around 20 psi, maybe, maybe 30, and about 25 psi diff. Again, uh, still not happy. That shouldn't be going out on high. That's probably not even open on high pressure because it's a manual reset. Maybe that's as good as that's going to get. Might be a duff switch. We wouldn't think that would um, be able to range 20 psi in that time. I reckon that switch is faulty. Because the cut in, it should be, it'd have to be 30 psi to cut in, and it'd have to go down to 5 psi to cut out, and then it have to come back up to 30 again to cut back in again. There's no way it's doing that in that time. So it's not not right, but that sort of rapid cycling is the sort of thing you get with a HP switch. Um, you know, if the valve was shut on the head, it would do that. But this is a manual reset one, or at least it should be. Um, so I wouldn't expect it to be going out on HP. So it could be a duff switch. It does look like it's been arcing in there. Yeah. Right, we've had a bit of a tidy up. Put that low pressure connection onto the cylinder head, which is where it should be. There's a blanking plug just for that purpose, so why they put it on that valve, I don't know. And they've done the same on, on that side with that T, and we've put that in the head connection, which is where that should be. Um, we've got a tidy up in here. They're a bit thin, 
and all these other ones joining bits up, it's, you know, it's just a mess really, so tidy that all up. Um, run cap was faulty, put a new, new one in there, and 10 out of 5, it should have a 15 on there. And it's not usually, you'll get some reading on there, but it's Three or four seconds to think about it, and then uh, comes up with a reading, but that's nothing. It's not as 1.3 nanofarads, which is it's pretty much what the wires <laughs> capacitance in the cables really. Well, I've tried it on the new one, and it does work, so it's not the meter's faulty. And the, the start caps are okay, I've checked them. So, how it was running. Well, couldn't have run very well. Same on that one. Nothing. Open circuit. Fitted that on, because that was just floating about. In there. I've put some... I've changed the oil in there. I've put some synthetic oil in there. It was on mineral oil before. Um, and that will suit better. Or sort of blended. This would have been on R12 when it was new, so the synthetic ester oil will be better with all the newer gases, depending on what we run it on. I don't, even, I don't know what's in there, and I don't know if there's enough in there to run it, so we'll see. Um, put it back on. We've had it on bank for a bit and got it down to 1100. Might go down a bit more. Which is not great, but um, considering this was full of refrigerant when we started, um, and this has still got refrigerant in, so I mean, if you've got one of these valves letting by a tiny bit, you won't get the major vacuum. The difference is it? Yeah, they're the the connections up. Probably do an oil change as well, it's not helping. Right, given these a wash out, that was a bit blocked up. I did these other two as well, so they were dirty. Um, it's a bit fizzing, but I think it's the concrete where it's getting wet. Anyway, um, I just thought I'd run them up just to uh, see if they all worked. And I ain't got any water in the motors or anything. Um, and this one was uh, cycling on and off. So I thought, well, that looks like it's got a gas leak somewhere, which is a bit of a worry. Obviously it's all new pipe work. So you wonder if it's something I've done. But it was on pressure test for uh, oh, probably, I think it was a few weeks actually. So uh, anyway, this is what we've found. Zoom in. Don't focus very well. Move back a bit. Yeah, you can just about see that. 
and that's on the um, receiver where that valve's welded on. Um, when it came, it had gas in it still, so I kept that valve shut, and all I did was pressure test my pipework in the tank, so I wouldn't found a leak on there. Was it? Like I say, it came with um, R22 still in it. So that seems to have leaked out four kilos. Um, there's enough, pretty much just vapour in there now. Um, there was a bit of oil on here, I was a bit worried it might have been my flare joint that I'd done, but uh, it's obviously come out through there. That's the other place I've known these things go, is around the fusible plugs. Um, quite often the sealant dries out after, over the years and it leaks around the threads. And it's just a case of unscrewing it, cleaning it up, putting some new sealant on there and it's uh, good to go again. Receiver, I think. What size this is? Figure, is that figure bomb? Uh, oh, it's V8, so it might be 8 litres. Well, the thing system runs about 4 kilos, so as long as it's big enough to hold 4 kilos and a bit of spare. Um, volume 7 litres, is it? 7.7. Some of them have um, the total volume might be say 10 litres and the usable volume might be 8 because you know you want a bit of room for, same as a bottle, you want a bit of room for expansion. So you have to be careful with the ratings on these. You're matching like for like so some of the total, some are rated sized as the um, total volume and some are sized as the usable volume and if you're trying to get a replacement you can end up with one that's too small um, or too big. I mean too big is probably not so much of a problem. 